Our next guest expects consumers to jump more towards essentials and experiences versus goods, but does say there's room for growth in retailers who are innovating. Joining us here at Post 9 with her picks is Telsey Advisory Group CEO Dana Telsey. Such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Great to be here with you, too. You, too. I mean, we, the experiences and essentials we've covered, but I'm more interested in who's innovating right now with retail because you really are starting to see a gap between the winners and the losers. You are. And you look at who is driving innovation. Look at Ralph Lauren, who's seeing an average unit retail selling price increase of 10 percent globally and even up mid-single digits in U.S. department stores. That's a good number. Take a look at Abercrombie. Not only is the core Abercrombie brand redone, but look at Hollister. It's had now two quarters of sequential growth. And you look at Deckers with Uggs and with Hoka, where they're having newness in core Uggs and driving newness in Hoka. So there's newness out there. You've got to find it. And then with value, it's about TJX and the off-pricers. All of them delivered same-store sales of at least 5 percent. They're getting the benefit of the trade down. So it's not a matter with those names of the, well, the luxury consumers holding up or the teen rent retailers holding up. It's that these, these brands are just hitting the mark when it comes yes. to fashion trends. What are they doing in terms of new? Because people don't just want the same old, same old. If you're getting the same old, same old, you're competing on price. And it's tough to compete on price today, especially when the consumer at the lower and middle income, they're watching more carefully than ever. What do you think explains the big blow-ups, structural blow-ups the VF Corps, um, the, the Estee Lauders, what, are those all execution stories? I think they are. And there's some different things in each of them. You look at Estee Lauder and it's Asia and China. The focus on China impacted them while not focusing enough on growing in the U.S. You take a look at VF, look at Vans. Vans was a big contributor to VF. They didn't innovate. They didn't drive anything new. You have a new CEO in place and that innovation is going to need to be top of mind. Do you believe that inventory is net-net across the space, a positive going into holiday? It is. Inventory is very clean. Supply chains are normalized. You can chase into demand. But keep in mind, the promotions that are out there now, 30 to 40 percent, those are ho-hum. They're the same <laughs> type of promotions that we would have got a couple years right. ago. So then what's impressive from I a consumer standpoint? I think from the consumer standpoint, being out and being together, I think getting an experience that makes them excited about looking forward to something, I think that's what's going to drive things. And also, don't forget, you have a consumer that can wait this year. With Christmas on a Monday, like Courtney said, procrastinators can wait all they want. But a lot of the, these themes, I feel like, have been appreciated by the market. I mean, Carnival and Royal Caribbean right. soaring this year. E even Abercrombie, which has had better growth, has been a huge winner this year. Is there anything that you think is not where there's deep value that's not being appreciated? So what could be the surprises of 2020, 2024? Could it be a Steve Madden, where all of a sudden the ability to chase and trend right product and they're getting greater demand? You could see some interesting things there. You take a look at some of the other names out there, like what we're watching care for. You look at it at Urban Outfitters, and whether it's the free people business or even the anthropology business, there's some newness there. But the brand didn't do it, the, the no, main Urban Outfitters not brand. The Urban Outfitters, yeah. it's 25 percent of the business. It'll be interesting to see if the positive comp at Old Navy for the first time in two years, if that can continue, because that would certainly be watched very carefully. I was going to ask you whether or not you were impressed with Gap. Yeah, th the Old Navy number was impressive. Even if it's just a positive 1 percent, it can move the needle if it continues to build momentum. Is there something in Gap and Abercrombie, old 90s legends <laughs> that sort of are getting resuscitated from a I, brand standpoint? I think with Old Navy, it's the price point. It's the price point that is attracting people and getting a bigger share of the trade down. I think certainly what you're seeing with some of the others out there. You're seeing the newness matters. With Abercrombie, she captured data and changed the customer, a 25- to 40-year-old now, instead of just the teens.